Arthritis, what's some antiseases? What's your medium? Nuts and your bolts. Canvas? <laughs> Nuts and bolts, fine thread. Hey, this is Philip here for another update on our uh, D-Series Honda powered pickup mini truck here. Uh, and before I get into it, I want to talk about uh, today's video and the fact that it's sponsored by Skillshare. Uh, Skillshare is a really cool uh, online learning platform and we'll talk a little bit more about it later. Um, but for now, let's get back into this project and what we've completed since the last video. Well, the last time you saw the truck, we had it uh, looking somewhat like this. Maybe it doesn't look that different from the outside, but we've done a lot of work. Uh, the main thing that we've done is the wiring. So last time you had it, all we had in was a little fuse box mounted on the firewall here. We didn't have any wiring in the car, and now we have everything wired in the car. So there's no engine in place, but we do have the subframe mocked up. Um, that wasn't in there last time. We did that so that we could complete the braking system. Uh, we've mocked up the subframe, we've got all the hard lines bent so that everything uh, we know fits and then uh, when the engine's finished being rebuilt we will pull the subframe out, install the engine and install it from below. But in the meantime what we've done is, like I said, the wiring for the entire vehicle. So with all of our Honda swamps or complete builds we always choose to completely eliminate all of the factory Lucas wiring. Um, it didn't work that great when it was new and it especially doesn't work great now. Uh, the wiring and electronics have come so far um, since the 60s when these were invented and, uh, and we choose to use modern electrical systems on these cars just to make them as reliable as possible. Most people when they're looking to do a Honda swap like this one of the main objectives is to get modern drivability, modern reliability out of the car and if you do that, but you keep an antiquated electrical system, uh, you're kind of only going half the way. So this is a really good example of what we do with our wiring system. We don't base it off of any kind of conventional kit. We build the wiring harnesses in-house completely from scratch and bespoke to each car. Um, uh, so maybe what I'll do is I'll go over the wiring system uh, a little bit here uh, and then we'll hook up a battery to it, uh, jump inside and I'll show you all the functionality of how it actually works because despite the engine not being in there, all of the chassis, uh, all of our stereo system, um, our air conditioning because it is electric in this car, uh, all the lights, everything functions, um, just doesn't turn on yet because the, uh, the engine's not here. So let's jump over to the beginning of the electrical system, uh, which would be the battery. Uh, in the back and we'll work our way forward and I'll explain everything on uh, how we put these together. So you have seen the back of the truck before and how we kind of have it laid out here. Uh, the wiring to this is a little bit more um, complete now. Uh, so as with most minis the battery is located in the back. Uh, this car previously was located underneath the passenger seat kind of back there but we've moved it into the bed here um, because it needs to be in really close proximity to our electric air conditioning compressor um, because of the amount of uh, amperage that the compressor needs to run uh, having the shortest distance between it and the battery is advantageous so we've got the battery here um, mounted down uh, and then the uh, AC compressor is on that side um, and you can see there's a whole bunch of uh, thick cables that go in between the two, but essentially what you need to know is that power is coming across, going through a circuit breaker, and then over to the battery here. Uh, the battery then goes down and we've got a, um, we've got a bulkhead fitting that allows us to uh, take the positive terminal of the battery, put it through the bulkhead fitting without obviously grounding on the chassis, and then we're able to run the uh, battery cable inside up uh, to both get power uh, direct to our amplifier and our subwoofer which is underneath the driver's seat um, because that similar to the AC compressor needs a lot of, um, of amperage to be able to have its 
full functionality. So we want that again to be as close to the battery as possible. So we can do that. And then we can run the battery cable forward all the way up into the engine bay uh, where it's attached to the starter solenoid. And then from there tees off and powers up uh, the rest of the electrical system. So uh, it's pretty neat and tidy. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on back here, but we tried to make it as clean as possible. Um, I don't know if you saw last time, but there is an ABS uh, plastic cover uh, that goes, that sandwiches with this plate here that goes down and locks it off so it weather seals it. Um, and then just aesthetically, you don't uh, see all the electrical stuff. You just see the tank and the, uh, and the spare wheel and the, um, and the jack there. So it'll be nice and clean. So if we follow along, if you imagine the battery cable goes forward uh, to the front of the car, uh, it joins up there at the starter and like I said, then goes to our fuse block and uh, let's go over there and we'll talk about that because that's pretty interesting. So following along from the back, uh, we've got the battery cable after running uh, to the, uh, the amplifier, it runs all the way forward and comes out here. Uh, we haven't finalized its, its uh, placement yet. This gets attached to the starter and then from there, uh, there's this big thick battery cable here um, that runs up and powers this piece here. Now this is sort of our chassis uh, computer, if you will. Uh, so this is what controls uh, everything on the car. So we've got a, uh, a battery positive input into here that's circuit protected. Uh, and then it's distributed to all of the outputs here. So we've got generic battery positive outputs, uh, we've got ignition positive outputs, and then we've got all the specific outputs uh, like our high beams, low beams, horn, flashers, um, wiper motor, sprayer, all of that stuff. Uh, and the way this system works is we've got your outputs here that go, you know, let's, let's take for instance, left front low beam. Uh, we've got left front low beam uh, that has a wire that goes out uh, and goes to the uh, to the headlight. The headlight is then grounded, uh, but then the activation of this power is by here. These are the input sides. So these are 12 volt activated. So what happens is uh, when you put your headlights on, uh, there is a small 12 volt signal that runs through the switch up to here and gives 12 volts here. That activates the uh, relays inside here to give power from this main battery source to the headlights. So what that means is that you don't have a lot of power running through your switches, um, which is different from the way that uh, the minis originally were. Most of the switches uh, on a classic mini, they have the full uh, voltage running or amperage running through the switch um, to its source, you know? So if you end up having uh, uh, indicators that don't work properly. Um, you know, sometimes you have to look at things like your hazard switch because all of the power runs through the hazard switch, then to the indicators and then to the lights. So uh, this system here is a lot more modern, uh, a lot easier on the electronic system. You don't need thick gauge wire run all throughout the car. Um, and then each one of these outputs is also circuit protected underneath this cover here. There's fuses for every single one of them. So uh, other than a normal mini, which has two or four, sometimes a little bit more fuses, uh, this has got 15 or 20. Um, so it's a lot easier to um, uh, make specific fuse choices depending on the circuits that are being used. Um, and it's just generally a lot better system. So we really like using systems like this. Um, with this here, uh, this is kind of the starting of our electrical system and then you get into a lot more detail. So you can see from here we've got service loops on all of these, just makes it easier to, um, to, to uh, be able to access them uh, if you need to take them in or out or do any sort of testing. They then get wrapped up uh, in a split loom uh, PVC uh, shielding here. This helps kind of protect the wire from chafing. Um, and the, uh, the, um, they're either taped together with uh, Tessa tape, which is a similar tape, it's actually the same tape that's used by a lot of OEM, specifically uh, German stuff, um, or they're used uh, shrink tubing, kind of like this combination, depending on the situation. And then for all of our connectors on these, uh, we go with uh, Deutsch connectors. So the entire system of the car is um, completely um, rid of the typical mini bullet connectors, which are so annoying and uh, 
They break when you take them apart. Uh, they don't have any sort of orientation. You can put them together wrong. Uh, they are not weather sealed, so they um, get all rusty inside. And there's so many headaches from that. So again, all the way to the connectors, we do completely modern stuff. Um, can show you in here. This is a, what a Deutsch connector looks like. It's a weather sealed uh, connector. Um, it can it can support um, all of the uh, the requirements that the electrical system needs in terms of um, amperage and whatnot. And uh, and they come in a variety of different um, sizes. So we go everything from uh, two pin all the way up to twelve pin. Uh, they're so easy to use, um, and we use them throughout the car on everything that isn't. Um, uh, a specific connector like you'd have on like an ECU plug or whatnot, um, we use a Deutsch connector. So uh, really put a lot of time and effort into the electrical system of this car and of all the cars that we build. Um, it's one of those things that takes a lot of time um, and, uh, and a lot of effort to get it right. But once it's done right, uh, it means that the electrical systems on these cars are essentially bulletproof and uh, will last for years and years of years. Uh, no more trouble and no more of the typical Lucas wiring headaches. So I know it's a little bit confusing and if you're not um, uh, very electrically uh, knowledgeable, uh, sometimes um, dealing with electrical stuff can be pretty daunting. Um, but like anything, if you know the principles of it, it actually becomes a lot easier. Um, and maybe actually this is a good time to talk about uh, the sponsor for today's video, uh, that would be Skillshare. So we've been longtime users of Skillshare, uh, and if you're not familiar with it, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of courses for creatives uh, like us. So if you've got skills that you're looking at getting better at or you want to learn a new thing, uh, Skillshare is definitely for you. You get access to thousands of courses. You can take all the ones you want. Uh, and because each course is less than 60 minutes usually, it's so much easier to fit into like a normal life schedule rather than going to conventional school. If you do enjoy the video production and the kind of quality of the stuff that we put out, in many ways you have Skillshare to thank. We uh, have learned so much about photography, editing, uh, video production. So if you have any interest in anything creative like that, um, check it out. It's really cool. There's a lot of uh, really good information there. I think a lot of YouTubers get the question, how do you stay motivated or stay inspired? Or why do you keep doing this? Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here, and this is a Samsung Galaxy S21. So after you're done watching this video, take a scroll down to the bottom. In the description there, we've got a link. The first thousand people to click it will get access to a trial membership that will give you access to all of the courses that they have. Uh, and I'm sure you'll find something that you like. Uh, it's a great place to learn, and you can do it all from the comfort of your house. So check it out. <laughs> so we're back inside the car. Uh, from here I can show you kind of how all the, uh, the switches work and whatnot. Uh, as you can see, we've got pretty much the entire interior together. Um, you know, we've got all the, uh, all the headliner and the, the dash is all in. Um, uh, we went with this sort of classic looking dash. So we did the center bezel, but we mounted in here. Uh, this is a Dakota Digital. Uh, gauge. Uh, we really like this gauge um, not only from a kind of a functionality standpoint, it's got a really cool uh, way of working where it's got a, a computer uh, where all the inputs go. Uh, so like your you know your coolant temp sensor and your, your high beam indicator, all that stuff goes to this computer and then from there this single cat fight cat5 cable that goes um, to the back of the gauge um, so that when you pull the gauge off you don't have a big mess of wires uh, it makes it really simple for installation and then also aesthetically this one in particular here uh, fits just perfectly in the uh, in the factory mini uh, center gauge cluster so it gives you that modern look um, but uh, but still kind of uh, with the classic lines, which we really like. So we end up going with this one. We've got all new interior here. You can see this right here is our air conditioning unit. Uh, this is a vintage air system. This was actually already in place in the car, uh, but the fitment's great. It actually kind of follows the normal um, body lines again of the dash of the Mini. So when you first look at it, you go, oh, you know, that's just a normal Mini, but um, you realize that this is actually the blower motor for the, uh, for the air conditioning. 
And then below it here, uh, we've got our, uh, our switches. Uh, I'll go over what those do, and then right underneath there, uh, this is the little controller here. This is for the stereo, which is activated by Bluetooth. Uh, there's also right down underneath here, um, there's a little uh, turn knob here that this um, uh, adjusts the levels of the subwoofer, which is behind my seat. Um, some of the things that you can't see is we've got uh, our uh, ECU here. This is a Honda P28 ECU with um, Honda S300 chip in there, so it's fully programmable. Um, this is going to be tucked in behind here, so you won't even see it. Um, like I said before, we've got our uh, computer uh, for the gauge mounted kind of up behind here, single cat fide cable going here, and then obviously all of our air conditioning lines and whatnot are run underneath, uh, you can't see any of that. We've also got an amplifier underneath the seat here, uh, and then there are speakers um, uh, mounted in the back uh, of, uh, of this panel right here that go in between here and the, uh, the firewall to the back. Um, with that being said, let's kind of show you how this all works and what we've got going on. So uh, this is uh, an early mini, so it does have the, uh, the dash mounted ignition key. Uh, we retained that, um, so we've got just the single uh, ignition here. Um, so with that, you just turn it one click. And that is your ignition on. You can see our gauges turn on here. They do a little flash. Um, and, uh, and you know, some of them are already working here. We've got volts and uh, temp and whatnot. Um, really cool system. Uh, so we've got that that turns on. And then uh, to keep it really, really simple, we've just got a series of toggle switches. We've got um, three toggle switches to the left of the key, one toggle switch to the right. And then we've got this push button here and this 12 volt plug. So starting from the left here, if I turn this one, click it down, you can see from the little lights indicating here, this is our hazard switch. Uh, all of the lights in the vehicle are LED uh, and all of the um, flasher relays are electronic so that they work with the LEDs. So we've got our hazard switch here. This next one here is our lights. So the way that this works is we've got lights off and lights on. When the ignition is turned on, uh, we've, for safety reasons, added uh, daytime running lights. So those are always on. So you've got the little ambers. Um, on the front and the back that just turn on when you turn the ignition on so you've always got some form of lighting uh, we just feel it's so much safer to have a little bit of light uh, even for the dusk hours and whatnot where you may forget to turn your headlights on but then when you turn your headlights on from here the high beam and low beam uh, is retained from the factory column here so we've got high beam low beam just as simple as that uh, don't need anything more Lights on and off, nice and see, simple. Uh, this next one here, you can't see yet because this is the fog lights. Uh, so we do have um, some uh, four spotlights up front uh, that are wired in, so that'll activate your fog lights. The next one over here is your wipers. Uh, it is a two-speed wiper um, with automatic park function. So click it once, slow speed, turn it off, click it two times, it goes to uh, fast speed, pretty simple there. Uh, this button here, this push button here, is the uh, windshield sprayer. So when you spray it here, it sprays the windshield. Um, and then finally, uh, right here, we've got a 12 volt plug so you can add any accessories. Uh, with the vintage air system, we've got the blower motor here. You've also got your temperature um, and your, uh, your air conditioning control here. Um, that's all pretty conventional. Uh, and then on the indicator here, left turn, right turn and the horn just the same as a normal mini so uh, from most standpoints it just feels like a normal mini um, but there's a couple neat features um, added that you may not see uh, one of them is right here uh, this is our uh, reverse camera and is also a forward-facing camera um, and when it turns off it's a uh, it's just like a reflective surface uh, like a mirror, so you don't even know that you have it until you go and turn it on and activate it. Um, and then you've got um, you've got both your uh, your front-facing camera, rear-facing camera, and it records just in case of an accident, especially with the amount of time and money that's invested into this car. You want to have a little protection, so that's good to have right there. Um, and it keeps it nice and clean. Put a little grommet here, and we actually ran the wiring up through... Um, 
through the uh, through the headliner here. We have to take the headliner down to do it, but it makes it nice and clean, so you don't have some cluttered wire coming down. Uh, from the bottom here, we've also got the stereo. Just push a button here, turns on, uh, and then activates just like that. Uh, sound system is actually pretty good because we do have big speakers and the sub underneath. Um, and yeah, keep it pretty simple. So from a functionality standpoint, uh, it's really easy, um, simple to use, um, looks classic, uh, but uh, from a technical standpoint, it's all modern stuff. Um, all of these switches are, uh, are like not even stressed because they're just activating a really small 12 volt signal to turn the computer on that then activates the, uh, the actual output. Um, so unlike the classic mini, you're not going to be burning through switches um, and everything just works as it should. So at this point, we're pretty much ready for the engine. Uh, I've got a couple of photos, maybe we can put them up now for, uh, for how the engine's coming along. It's a D16Y8 engine. Uh, so it will be um, fully rebuilt. It's going through that process right now. Transmission's back, that's gonna be fully rebuilt. Um, and we're using a D15 B2 transmission, which is the longer gear ratios. So you'll get the most powerful engine with the longest gears um, that will work best with the 10 inch wheels. Um, so that is all getting put together. Once that's together, it'll just be a matter of installing that. We've got a couple other cool things we're doing uh, kind of with the cooling system and whatnot that we'll go over. Um, but that'll be all in the next video. So make sure, stay tuned, hit the uh, bell so you get notified. Uh, when there's more videos coming out on this. Uh, and if you are interested in getting a uh, custom mini built or a Honda swap done, um, that is definitely a service that we provide. So please check us out, stevesonmotorco.com. Uh, you can send us an email. We can give you all the information on builds like this. Uh, we're looking to do a lot more of these. We've got uh, quite a few more planned in the near future. Uh, we'll be doing videos on all of those. So make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.